Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. We're going to be doing a focal length test or experiment. So what we've got, we're just gonna have, I want you to follow along with me if you can. So grab your camera, grab every lens you've got. Hopefully you've got at least one. Um, even a kit lens comes with a 15 to 55 millimeter lens usually. So you can follow along with me even if all you have is your kit lens. So what we're gonna do is we're going to see what happens with the different focal lengths for a portrait. And at the end of this, I wanna be able to decide or help you decide which focal length is the best for headshots. So we brought our model, Erin. She's so excited to be here. So what you need is a camera, <laughs> a model, every lens you've got, we're hoping to be able to hit a range. I've got my 24 to 70. We're gonna hit a range of 24. 70, we're gonna hit a 100, and we're gonna hit a 200 focal length, and we're going to decide which ones we like the best. So as we're shooting this, we want the model's face to stay as close as absolutely possible to the same, uh, we're gonna fill the frame about two thirds of the frame with the model's face. I don't, it's not going to work as well if you are really zoomed out and you're standing across the room, we need, we need that face to fill the entire frame. I'm gonna step right here in front of the model. We're starting with a 24, which is our most wide angle. And what we're going to look for when I take this picture is the distortion on the model's face. In photography, the closest thing to the camera is biggest. So when you're posing like a larger size model or larger size subject, just remember that if you wanna minimize her hip, or something you can tilt her into the camera, close thing to the camera. And that compounds when we're shooting a wide angle really close to the subject. So I'm gonna be 24 millimeters. Um, my settings, I'm at 200 on my shutter speed, 2.8 on my aperture, and 400 on my ISO. So we're gonna just be right here. Oh, 24, and I want to fill the frame as much as possible. Remember, your lenses also have minimal focusing, focusing distance, minimum focusing distance. So if we're looking at that, I want us to notice, look how much more narrow it made her chin. Your chin's not normally that narrow, but it made your nose very large. <laughs> so then we're gonna step away. I'm gonna turn my focal length to 70 millimeters. And to get that same, if I were to take it right here, she's too big in the frame. So I'm gonna back up, but I want, the other image in the frame so as I back up I can see about how far out I need to be. It's probably good. Keeping my settings the same. Okay, so if we're looking at just face shape, oh look at that, that's crazy. It rounded out her face, a lot more natural looking. Her nose doesn't look as um, prominent. <laughs> Looks more like a natural nose. And her face doesn't even look as tall. Like, look at how tall it, that first shot made her face look. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask my assistant to bring me my 70 to 200. <laughs> and I'm gonna trade them out. Watch me drop my lens on live YouTube television. It's fine, it's all insured. <laughs> and, okay, so our next focal length we're going to go for so how you can tell what your focal length is, is there's a little notch or a mark on the barrel of your lens, and you line that up with the numbers just above, and before you even take the shot, you can know what your focal length is. So we're gonna hit it at 100. So again, I can't even take it this close, but if I could, because my minimum focusing distance, I'm too close to the subject, but if I could, she's way too big in the frame. So I'm gonna back up. I want to know how far back to go. I like what it's doing to the background when I switch the focal length. And I would say that if I were to look at Erin's face and compare that to what's on the viewfinder, that's probably the closest so far. Okay, now we're going to go 200. And again, if I were to take it from here, it's, she fills way too much of the screen. So I'm going to look here and we're going to back away. A little bit more. So at this focal distance, I would dare say we're not seeing much change. Yeah, mainly our background. It's 
compressing that. So yeah, what we're gonna do after this is we're going to take it into the computer, see them side by side and see if we can decide which one is our best focal length for a headshot. Okay, so now that we've finished our experiment, we're snucking, snucking, we've snuck back into the office to pull them up on the computer and look at them side by side. So we've got the images here side by side and I've labeled them each with their lens focal length name. So we have a range of wide angle, mid range, and telephoto images, zoom images. If you want more clarification on the terminology I'm using, our course, the Baby Photo Academy, covers the lens focal lengths, what a telephoto is compared to a wide angle, what a zoom is, can you have a zoom that's a telephoto, etc., etc. So please go to babyphotoacademy.com and watch our free webinar. We have a ton of information that we're giving away for free in our webinar. So back to our comparisons. We've got our 16 millimeter here up on the screen and I'm going to compare it side by side with our 24 millimeter. Uh, the things I want to look at are her the size of like her cheeks and her jawline, how wide her nose is, and even the little swoop on her hair. So those are the things we're going to kind of watch as we compare. 16 is on the left, 24 is on the right. Even just that little jump of focal length, her, the nose is a little more narrow. Her jawline, her chin is a little less distorted in the 16, it's really long. Um, and then even this part of our jaw is in the 16, it's really concave. And the 24, even just going that little bit amount corrected that. So I'm going to pretty much say never shoot a portrait with a 16 millimeter lens. I'm not saying never shoot it on people or never use it on a, on a people shot, maybe lifestyle where you're trying to get some really cool effects, but never on just a headshot. So let's pull up our 24 and our 35. 24 is on the left, 20, 35 is on the right. It seems like her head is getting a little less tall. Her jawline, it's hard to compare the 24 because she's not smiling. So let's come back to the 16 and compare the two. So her chin is a little less protruded. Um, her teeth are starting to look a little bit more normal. Her nose is looking more normal. Her cheeks are looking more normal and even the top of her hair. So let's come up to the 50, we're gonna compare the 35 with the 50 and side by side that 50 almost looks like the Aaron that I see frequently. <laughs> um, the 20 or the 35 is not bad. And honestly, if a client saw that, they would they might think they look a little different, but I don't know that they would be able to put a finger on why. 50's on the left, the 70's on the right. That's really close to what Aaron looks like in real life. If you haven't met Aaron in real life, that's what Aaron looks like is the 70 millimeter. Um, even the swoop in her hair is just normal. We didn't fix her hair in between the 16 and the 70. It's so interesting to me that even the swoop on her hair is different. So then we're gonna go to the 85. We're gonna go up to the 100. And I'm just gonna be a little bit silent because I want you to just kind of study what's going on here. The 185 and the 200. So one thing I noticed as I'm looking at them is her face is starting to go the other way with that extreme telephoto. 200 is considered a telephoto and a zoom. She's starting to fill out this way and her face in this 200, her face in real life is not that full. So I would dare say that if we went up to like a 400, her face would even look more round. So I think with a wide angle, our face is tall and narrow and I'm assuming, I don't have a 400, but I'm assuming from what we're seeing here as we were to go more telephoto, her face would probably get wider and wider, which is also not flattering. So I would say the 200 is not a flattering portrait. I mean, it looks fine, but no woman ever wants her face to look wider than it really is. So I'm going to give my conclusion that right around the 75, 85 range, is Aaron's natural look. I'm leaning towards this 85. So I did do a fun little comparison and I stacked them on top of each other in Photoshop so that we could really quickly, and I lined the top of her head on each image and the bottom of her chin as much as I could, because obviously it's 
elongated. Here's the 16, the 24, 35, 50, 70, 85, 100, 185, and 200. And now we're gonna go backwards. 200, there's the 185, the 100, the 85, the 70, the 50, the 35, the 24, and there's our 16. So it's kind of neat to see them and what the background does. Obviously the white angle gives the whole studio, whereas if we go up and click on this 200, you're only getting even just a portion of the window behind her. You're not even getting the full window. So even seeing what these different lens lengths do to the background is pretty eye-opening. So here's your wide angle. Um, my studio is quite large, so to be able to get almost wall to wall, the wall is about here and the other wall is right on the other side of this window. So to be able almost to get wall to wall and then to come clear in on that 200 and you don't even have one window. So that's an interesting thing to look at when you're looking at lens focal lengths as well. So that's my conclusion. I'm going to say if you're going to shoot a headshot for somebody, I strongly recommend you shoot right around an 85. We're gonna come here just so, and look at them here. We're gonna come to the 85 because I've edited them at Aaron's request. We're women, we all we all have the little breakouts, right? Um, so there's the 85. It looks like who she really is. And I think that is the most important when you're shooting a headshot is you don't wanna distort their face wider or taller. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell because then you will get notifications when we post new videos. We're trying to do that one or two times a week, hopefully two, but sometimes as we're creating the course, we end up doing just one because our life is crazy. So have a fantastic day and we will see you around. Bye.